quite lucky for her drive through the city of London today for her silver jubilee because it didn't rain but here at Marlborough in Wiltshire it's been tipping down all day which has somewhat dampened the enthusiasm of the local round table who are preparing an ox roast and also many medieval festivities for the day ahead so far as we know there's been four other occasions when ox were roasted here in Marlborough the first was in 1814, to coincide with the signing of the Paris Treaty, which is quite appropriate, bearing in mind that in a mere three months from now, the 1st of January 1973, we'll be going into the common market. And then in 1838 was the coronation of Queen Victoria. This was followed in 1887 by Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. And then the last one before this present one today was in 1902, to coincide with the coronation of King Edward VII. Well, Mr. Ted Pocock, a farmer from Cusey, you're the expert that had the job of choosing this animal to roast. Uh, where did you get it and what Chip made you choose it? Chip to market Friday. The mayor asked me if I could get one. He wanted a 1200 weight heifer, but um, a bit hard to get that day, so I, I got a steer. It's a short horn freezing cross. It's a nice, well finished beast. And you want one with uh, some good hindquarters. And it's an ideal job for this, not too much waste. Uh, was it a difficult job choosing it? No, there's plenty about. Plenty about. No, there was plenty to choose from. This, this one took my fancy. Oh. And Well, Mr. Tug Wilson from Exeter, you're the expert here in charge of this roasting. What's the secret behind it? I think the time that you put it on the fire, the type of fire that you've got, not this weather that we've got here today, this is the worst you could possibly have. Nice sunny weather. Well, it was uh, 9.30 this morning when you put it on. It's not going to be ready until about 7 o'clock tonight. Not, we don't want it till 7, but I'm sorry, we didn't get it on the fire until about half past 10 this morning. We had difficulty with getting it on the pole. 
<laughs> what is the main difficulty for you in uh, cooking an ox in this way? Oh, just getting the fire at the right temperature, keeping the thing turning very, very slowly, and letting the basting mm, do the cooking. Continual basting. With what do you baste it? Dripping any kind of fat, animal fat. Yeah. Gallons of it, I should imagine. Buckets of it, yeah. <laughs> 56 pounds we started with. How heavy is the beast, and uh, how, how do you choose the ideal ox for roasting? You want a fine-limbed animal, a fine-boned animal, and not too much fat on it. And this one weighs about 11.1. Now, what's the secret as regards the fire? What sort of wood do you use? Um, well, best is oak mixed with ash. Oak for slow burning, a good hot fire. Ash for quick burning and catching your oak up. Well, it's now some ten hours since this ox was put on the spit and the church bells have stopped ringing, which more means that the mayor, Tony Gray, is soon coming along to cut the first slice. And then we have an auctioneer who's going to auction that first slice. On this historic occasion this evening, it was my privilege to present to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip the law greetings of the people of Marlborough for this their silver wedding day. Go! Good heavens, it's tough! <laughs> Steaming hot and lovely. Lord, <coughs> ladies, my daughter citizen, of this ancient and fine burg of Mogla, we are here to auction this fine roast beef of England. <coughs> what may I say? At 19 pounds, have you done? At 19! That's good. No, they don't want it. Is. Well, Councillor okay, Tony Gray, you're the mayor. It was your idea to uh, hold this event. And the first slice was auctioned for £19. I can't believe it. It's very succulent beef, but £19. Well, it amazed me as well. It was an absolutely genuine bid. It was paid for charity. Of course, it's going for charity. The chap. Possibly it's on the spur of the moment and he's overawed by the event. I certainly am. I, I thought it may be popular, but I had no idea it would be as popular. Would you say that Marlborough's a very much a royalist town and borough? Well, Marlborough perhaps is fairly traditional. Let's put it like this. Marlborough is, is very traditional, and uh, but this is a tradition we haven't seen since 1887. I thought 1902, King Edward the uh, Seventh's coronation was the last one. Well, we don't really talk about that one. Uh, they took 20 hours to roast the beast. When it was roasted, um, when it was roasted, unfortunately, they went to carve it and they found that they'd done it so slowly it had gone off and they couldn't even speed it to the tramps and the stray dogs. Well, they certainly can't say that about this beef. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you can see through the crowds behind me, the beast is really done to the proverbial turn. How does this meat compare to the modern way of cooking it? Well, it's different. <laughs> it's very much different. Do you think it's better or not? 
Or should we say it's tastier? It's, it's tastier. It's tastier, it's got, definitely. Oh, yeah. What do you think the secret is, then? Oh, it's the cooking. It's the chef, isn't it? Most definitely, I mean, you know. What about high-speed gas and clean electricity and things oh, like there's this? there's more fun in this, isn't there? You know, fingers would be made before forks, weren't they? <laughs> do you think the taste is genuinely better? Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think of this uh, beef? It's very nice. Very nice. It's very nice. How does it compare with the Sunday roast? Very nice and deep. Nice and tender. Very tasty. Well, what do you think of uh, this then? I think it's very good. <laughs> Better than home cooking? I'll try it and let you know for certain. <laughs> Munch, mint. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> and what do you think? <laughs> Tastes like the Sunday dinner we cooked yesterday, actually. <laughs> what, is that a good sign or a bad sign? <laughs> well, it's not too bad. What about your shy friend behind? <laughs> So what do you think? What do you think of it? It's all right, I suppose. What do you think of it, George? I bite crikey. <laughs> that's, that's a bit, good bit of goo, eh? Do a little bit of salt with it. Ah, look at the goo. You wanted the best, dude. Beg your pardon? You wanted the best, Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <safe? laughs> yeah. Nice right. and tasty. Ah. Well, what do you think of it? Is it as uh, beef should be cooked? Uh, yes. Uh, done both sides. <laughs> that's how I like it. <laughs> uh, that's just how I like it, done both sides. Are they going to be done both sides if it comes from the middle of the ox? Ah, uh, well, gets underneath, see? That's the other side. I like it rare myself. Yeah. Uh, my God, there's a bit. That's my point of that. This end look. <laughs> Was that better? Not very George, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, God, I can do with a pint out of this, cousin me. We'll have a couple too. Ah, uh, that we will. How does this compare with your normal Sunday lunch? Uh, well, I hadn't, I hadn't better say too much. Come on, woman, you. Or am I, you know. Well, let's ask you then. Uh, uh, Come through, my dear. Come she's, through. She's having a bit. What? <laughs> What do you think of these uh, rolls? I think they're they're very nice indeed. And how do you well, honestly think, as a lady cook, how do they Listen. compare with uh, they're, uh, they're just as good as my cooking. Are they really? Yes. Uh, Definitely got a lovely flavour. Yeah, jolly good. <laughs> Well, as the night wears on, the beef seems to improve somehow, I don't know why. 
And all I can say is that this night seems to have been a great success, and as far as the people of Marlborough are concerned, I'm sure they can't wait for the 50th anniversary of Her Majesty the Queen's wedding. Congratulations to the Queen's silver wedding. Good luck to the Queen and Prince Philip.